Temporary shelter. Uh, for more on this, we can now bring in TV and radio host Karen Turk and Paul Wright, editor of Prison Legal News. Uh, thank you both for being with us here on RT International. And for uh, the viewers, uh, just have a bit of a warning. There is a little bit of a delay on, um, on some of this because we do have some satellite issues. So that might lead to some delays in the conversation. Um, but Karen, let's start with you first. Uh, should landlords have the right to check what kind of a person is living in their property? Of course they should. I can't even believe that this is an actual conversation and a real thing. This is not going to even help with the ho homeless population. And I think this is very irresponsible on behalf of the government, on behalf of city officials, on behalf of everybody who's taking part in this. You know, there's a there's a rate of reoffenders that's as high as 40 percent for people who've been in prison. And the bottom line is, is that owners need to be informed. They need to protect their property owners. That's what the city's about. And this is extremely irresponsible for every reason. You know, owners should be able to make informed decisions about who they're renting to. This is a safety concern. And civil liberties should not trump people's safety. We have freedom in America. But you know what? We can't just bend into PC culture and worry about offending people. And this is not a solution to the city's problem. Now, Paul, um, uh, you know, navigating the homeless uh, crisis in California, Oakland specifically, is a landmine. Do you think, though, that this is violating landlords' rights? I mean, surely there are valid security concerns uh, for people conducting checks. You know, I think that part of the problem, though, is there's not really a correlation between people's criminal history and also there's, there are uh, levels of, re of reoffense and also any public safety issues. One of the things that we know is that not having a job and not having a place to live increases recidivism rates and, in fact, endangers public safety. And having actually been a landlord myself and a renter myself over the years, I would say that as a landlord, the main thing I've been concerned about is uh, can a tenant, can they pay the rent and are they going to tear the place up? And if the answer is no to both of those questions, then I think you probably want them as a tenant. And the reality is we have 70 million convicted felons in the United States. That's almost a third of the population. Uh, so I think that if you start excluding people just on the basis of a past criminal history, which isn't happening because we don't have 70 million homeless felons in America, um, then I think that um, you need to be looking at what the actual basis is. And I think this, the city of Oakland did the right thing here is by removing the background check, they're removing a basis uh, for de denying people housing based on bigotry and discrimination rather than actual facts. And I think that uh, if you're actually going to deny people housing based on something they may have done 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, that's a far cry from denying them uh, a place to rent based on whether or not, say, for example, they can pay the rent, or are they currently engaged in criminal activity? And I'd say as a landlord, those are your two concerns. Is someone engaged in criminal activity? Are they doing something that's going to damage the property? And can they pay the rent? And I think those are the legitimate concerns. And this has nothing to do with political correctness or anything like that. I think that public safety is too important of an issue to, be, to fall victim to political demagoguery. Karen, what say you to that? I, I totally disagree, and this is all about the PC culture we live in, and this is all about, you know, just an agenda that we're so worried about offending everybody that we're putting our own safety at risk as Americans, and it's something we have to take a good, hard look at. You know, there are plenty of people that have blemishes on their record. I happen to be one of them, and I'll take responsibility for that, and I'll own that here right now. But if I was going to be renting a property, I would have absolutely no problem explaining that to an owner that I was going to have a relationship and rent from. And I, I really think that that needs to be something that's looked at. You know, if there's a reason that we need to keep these histories hidden, there's probably something to hide. And I see no reason why someone couldn't be transparent about their history and be able to, you know, explain something unless it's something really serious. And I think it does raise major safety concerns for families. You know, we have sex offenders. We have a sex offender registry. I don't know how 
Oakland is planning on using that. And, you know, what, what does this mean? That we're going to let sex offenders rent from people who have families and children? I mean, I, I'm just very concerned about the entire thing. And I, I, I'm very surprised to hear that my colleague over here can defend this in any way, shape, or form. And I think this is really something that the city has been incredibly irresponsible on. And this scares me for California, and it scares me for everybody in America, because this is going to open up a can of worms that we can't come back from. And it's all about PC culture. Well, Paul, uh, the fine for breaking this new rule is $1,000. Uh, will that be enough to stop people from doing background checks, given that an average one-bedroom apartment costs more than uh, $2,150 a month? I don't know if it's going to deter them, but I think that this is also the thing, too. Again, uh, I have to disagree with Karen that I don't think this has anything to do with uh, political correctness, because I think, you know, we have laws that also prohibit discrimination based on race, based on gender, uh, in some cases uh, based on sexual orientation, on religion, and things like that. And I think that it's one thing uh, to say that, you know, property owners have a right to rent to whom they wish to, and another one that if they're going to be renting, they have to comply with laws that prohibit discrimination. And I think there's a difference between, um, between having laws that allow for bona fide or legitimate concerns versus those that are just the basis for the landlord's uh, bigotry or prejudices. And, I th and one of the things, too, I'll note that the Oakland law does contain except exceptions for sex offenders, people on, on the California Sex Offender Registry, and it also excludes uh, federal uh, federally subsidized housing, which allows for the exclusion of people with certain drug offenses. So it's not quite exactly a blanket um, thing. And I, and I agree with Karen, though, when she says about, you know, wanting landlords to have a relationship or know who their tenants are. But the reality is a lot of landlords are corporations. They're not individuals. And these are policies that are being set by corporate offices who rent hundreds or thousands of units around the country. And I think those are going to be the entities that are most impacted by, uh, by a law like this. And again, you know, why are people being deprived of housing? And I think it gives, if the landlord can find a legitimate reason to deny someone a property to rent to them, they're still able to do that. They just can't use a blanket issue like a felony conviction uh, or the background check itself as the basis to deny housing. So I don't okay. think it's nearly as far reaching as I think so, uh, some people may think it is. Karen, um, if I can jump in here, there is a homeless crisis in uh, ah. California, and there also is uh, rising costs, and there are a lot of corporations. Um, doesn't the government have um, a responsibility to try and mitigate this to some degree and set some laws to make it easier for these people? Yeah, I mean, but I think this is backwards. That would be exactly the reason why some of this might be federally subsidized housing, which is exactly what's being excluded from this. How does that make any sense? This is the most backwards thing I've ever heard. And to call this bigotry is completely wrong. There's a really big difference about excluding somebody based on race or religion or sexual, you know, preference, which are not choices. You know, people who have committed a crime have made a choice, maybe a bad choice, maybe something that they're sorry for, maybe something that they go back and they live a great life afterwards. But again, this is totally irresponsible to call this bigotry. This is not bigotry. It's not the same thing. Discriminating against someone because of a choice that they made to commit a crime is entirely different than excluding somebody based on race. How can we make that comparison? And this is not going to solve this crisis. And I think that's why I'm so upset about this. This is really backwards. The federally subsidized house Housing, maybe would be somewhat of a solution for this because these people who are homeless are going to have a hard time renting no matter what. A lot of them are not working. They are not employed. They do not have the income to substantiate these rentals. And it's irresponsible to the owners that are paying taxes and supporting the city. It's just completely the world gone mad. Uh, Paul, uh, under the Fair Chance Housing Ordinance, uh, Karen brought up a point earlier. I want to point out that landlords can still check whether a tenant is on the state sex offenders register or has a conviction for producing methamphetamines. Should those people be treated differently? Um, I really don't think they should. And I think that, again, what people did in the past is one thing. What they're doing at the moment or now is another thing. And I think that, um, you know, in that 
again, everyone needs a place to live. I think if you believe that uh, housing is a basic human right, then how are you going to accommodate that? And by excluding people from the rental markets based on uh, prior criminal convictions, um, you know, I, I think that that's, that's part of the problem. And in fact, what's well, one of the things that we see right now when, uh, let's use California as an example since that's what we're talking about. Tens of thousands of people were convicted of possessing marijuana uh, uh, over the decades until recently when marijuana was legalized. Are you going to use um, those criminal convictions for marijuana possession or marijuana production or distribution when it was a crime? Are you going to use that as the basis to exclude people from housing today when that same activity is legal? And I think that's what you're talking about is, you know, what's the relevance? And, and again, if you're excluding people based on past conduct, how is that past conduct relevant to who that person is today and whether or not they should be getting an apartment rented to them um, today. And I think in some respects the biggest form of discrimination for so much of this, of course, is the rents themselves. As you noted, All right. uh, rents in the Bay Area in general and Oakland uh, I, I have to jump in here. High. That acts as its own form of discrimination. I have to jump in here because this is live TV and we do have a time constraint. I'm going to give you each 30 seconds to make your case. Karen, go. Uh, I think that this is the most backwards thing I've ever heard, as I've mentioned about three times. I think the city's being irresponsible. I think we need to look at this. We need to look at the fact that people do reoffend, and this is irresponsible to the homeowners in this community. There is a 40% rate of re-offending and going back to jail. I would love for the other guests to answer that because he's acting like that doesn't exist. And I think we need to be very concerned about the direction California is taking. This is not the right direction. Paul? I think it's a good first step in the right direction. And I think that by ensuring access to affordable housing, I think that's one of the steps that will be take that can be taken that will reduce recidivism and also enhance public safety and also equality for uh, disadvantaged populations. All right, uh, TV and radio host Karen Turk and editor of Prison Legal News, Paul Wright. Wish we could talk about this longer. Thanks for being with us here on RT International. All right, I will be with you with more news at the top of the hour. Stay with us.